Hello everyone, now we will start discussion on the topic air pollution control part 1. So far we have discussed that our first strategy should be to prevent pollution. In spite of that, there might be some possibilities to create pollution. We cannot prevent 100 percent the pollution creation although we take sufficient care. So, in that case what pollution is generated that has to be controlled and this can be done by using different equipment and instrument and different methods. So, that part we will discuss in this module and the contents are typical air pollutants, typical composition of different gases causing air pollution processes and equipment for removal of unwanted elements from gas, removal of specific gas components like SO2, NOx and carbon dioxide and ambient air cleaner and air filter. So, this content we will cover in 4 classes. Now, we will see typical air pollutants. Already we have discussed that there are a number of criteria pollutants which are very, very important for the quantification of air quality. Those are particulate matters, SOX, NOX, ozone, lead and apart from these we have VOC, CFC, chlorofluorocarbon and then NO2, nitrogen dioxide and ozone. The sources of these pollutants we have already discussed. It can enter into the environment through natural sources as well as man made sources and some sources are also mentioned here that is source of lead, source of ozone and methane and volatile organic carbons. Now, we will see different types of gases which are responsible for the generation of pollutions in the air. Examples are say combustion gases. So, when some fuel or carbonaceous material is combusted, then we get a flue gas which mainly contains carbon dioxide, NOx, SOx, H2O that is in vapor and particulate matter and nitrogen. And in this case, we need to develop some methodology to remove the these components like NOx, SOx, particulate matter and carbon dioxide. So, similarly through the gasification process, we can get different gas in the produced gas stream like carbon monoxide, hydrogen, CO2, H2S, COS, PM and CH4. These are the major components and we need to remove these also carbon dioxide, H2S, COS and PM. Pyrolysis of biomass and waste through this route also the gas comes out to the environment which contains carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen and hydrocarbons. We need to remove carbon dioxide from this and pyrolysis of waste plastics also gives us different gases that also contains hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, HCl and dioxins. So, this dioxin is very, very toxic and we need to remove carbon dioxide, HCl and dioxins from these gas streams also. And anaerobic digestion through this process we get the gas which contains methane, carbon dioxide, H2S and H2O that is uh, moisture or vapor and removal of CO2, H2S, H2O are very, very important. So, these, these removal normally takes place in the premise where the gases are produced in industrial scale. Apart from that, so vehicular emissions that is very difficult to control basically and it contributes on the amb ambient air quality. So, to make the environment clean, we need to control the emission of these gas components when it is get entry into the atmosphere. Here we have not mentioned regarding hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons mostly is available in terms of unconverted hydrocarbons in terms of suits or it may be as volatile components. So, volatile compounds, so those are also needed to be removed. Now, we will see 
processes and equipment for removal of unwanted elements from gas. So, in the gas one is particulate matter and another is other gas components we need to remove which are not desirable in the environment. So, for the separation of particles or the particulates there are number of techniques and methods we will be discussing those like say gravity settlers then electrostatic precipitator and filters that is fabric filters and cyclones. So, these are the mostly used equipment or the processes which are used for the removal of particulates from the gas stream. So, we will be discussing those and for the removal of gas molecules like say socks, NOx etcetera, we will be discussing two major methods one is based on based on absorption that is wet process and another is dry process which is based on adsorption. And there are some methods where both particulates and gas components can be removed like say scrubbing. So, wet scrubbers are also available we will discuss all those processes and devices and we will learn how to remove the particulates and other gas components from the exit gas and what are the mechanism of this equipment and the principle of working of these equipments. And in this part 1 we will be mainly focusing on the uh, gravity settlers. So, here this slide shows us a horizontal flow settling chamber. As you know if we fall a ball or any particle from a height. So, gradually its velocity will increase initially the velocity is 0 then gradually its velocity will increase and it will attain a maximum velocity that will be stable thereafter that is called terminal settling velocity. So, this terminal settling velocity bigger the particle size more the terminal settling velocity. So, to travel a certain distance the more the terminal settling velocity lesser the time required. So, the same principle will be applicable for the separation of the particles in the gravity settlers. So, this figure if we see so, here is the gas in. So, inlet gas is coming here. So, it will be having some velocity. So, that velocity is equal to say v. So, this velocity gas is coming. So, if particles are present in it. So, that particles will also be having the velocity v and here the gravity is also working on the particle. So, the particle is under the action of multiple forces. So, one trajectory we will get through which this particle will will move. So, now it is having a horizontal velocity v and vertical velocity v t that is terminal settling velocity. So, this is our resultant velocity. Now, if you see one particle is here. So, I want to get it separated. So, the basic principles of separation of any particles when it is in motion just if we can put something in its path and then its flow will be arrested and the velocity in that particular direction will be 0 and the particle will fall. So, if this particle we want to settle here certainly the time required to travel from this point to this point the inlet to outlet within this time the particle must travel the vertical distance which is the as per the dimensions of this settling chamber. So, this is the basic requirement or the design principle for this settling chamber. So, if we consider the length is L and height is h. So, in this case L by v, v is the horizontal velocity. So, L by v is the time required to travel from inlet to outlet by the particle and h by v t where v t is the terminal settling velocity that is the time required to travel the particles from the top to the bottom of this, uh, this chamber. So, this time requirement should be equal. So, this is the critical condition for the separation. So, L by V equal to H by V T. Now, this V T is equal to what? V T is terminal settling velocity and terminal settling velocity will depend upon the particle size, the viscosity of the fluid, the density of the particle uh, etcetera and what is the G value though that is the gravitational acceleration. So, those values will be influencing the value of V T and V T is equal to root of 4 g d p rho p minus rho g divided by 
root over 3 C D rho G. So, this expressions we will discuss where from this is coming by the force balances on it and this C D is nothing but the drug coefficient. So, this, this drug coefficient will be depending on the velocity of the of the gas stream. So, the velocity is higher that is your it will be in turbulent, but velocity is less we will be getting this is in laminar flow. So, up to certain Reynolds number we will be getting uh, laminar flow and in that case when the Reynolds number is less the we will be getting the laminar flow and in that case C D is equal to 24 by R E P, R E P is nothing but the particle Reynolds number. So, this C D value we, we can replace it by 24 by R E P. So, V T will be converted to G D P square rho p minus rho g by 18 mu g. So, this expression is the expression for the terminal settling velocity of a particle which is falling in laminar zone. The flow of the particle is not that high, so that the Reynolds number be less. And this equipment the gravity settlers are very uh, simple and it is not costly. And to settle large abrasive particles like say greater than 50 micron this device is, is workable and it has low maintenance and low efficiency as well and it is also considered as pre cleaner. So, for the separation of very fine particles it may not be that good device, but for the separation of relatively larger particle this can be a good option and this is a very simple method. Now, we will see how the V T expression we are getting. Okay. So, let us see this is the particle which is falling. So, there is one force that is F G that is gravitational force which is working in downwards direction. So, upward directions one force is working that is F B that is buoyancy force as you know when a solid particle falls then in a fluid then fluid uh, is replaced same volume of fluid is re replaced and it gives a force to the particle in opposite direction. So, that is buoyancy force and uh, another force we will be seeing here that is drag force. So, this drag force is also uh, working on this particle when it is falling in the air. So, that drag force will also work in the same directions of the buoyancy force opposite to the gravitational force. So, if we think about the force acting on this particle and we consider the force balance then we can say that resultant force on this particle is equal to the force due to gravity minus force due to buoyancy minus force due to drag. So, this uh, or F g minus F b minus F d. So, this drag force is basically mentioned as kinetic energy force. So, in many books it is written as F r that is related to the kinetic energy of unit volume of the of the fluid. So, this is the expression for the resultant force on this particle. Now, when it will be moving with terminal settling velocity, so there will be no resultant force. So, that it will be moving in the constant velocity that is terminal settling velocity. So, in this case uh, we will be getting resultant force equal to 0. So, now let us express this resultant force. So, m is the mass of the particle and a e is the uh, resultant acceleration. So, m into A e that is the resultant force. So, that is equal to m into g that is gravitational force minus buoyancy force that is m by rho s into rho f into g and this is our F r. So, F r is the drag force. So, drag force as I mentioned it is related to the kinetic energy of unit volume of the system unit kinetic energy per unit volume. So, F r is equal to A into k d into c d. So, A is the cross sectional area and k is the characteristic kinetic energy per unit volume and c d is nothing but the drag coefficient. So, k which we are talking about that is half into v t square into rho g. So, what is half m v square? So, if I take one volume unit volume of the fluid so v into rho g. So, that is equal to mass of the fluid and then half m v square that is kinetic energy of the fluid. So, this is the expression of k and the expression of a, a is nothing say a particle is falling from this. 
So, we will be taking the cross sectional area here. So, the cross this cross sectional area is A. Okay, so, then this A will be pi r square. So, pi dp square by 4. So, this is our A the k expression we have described. So, if we put the value of A and k in this f r and also put the values of this f r here in this expression and put m a e equal to 0, then we will be getting the value of v t. Say in this case what is f r is equal to m g minus m by rho s into rho f into g. So, we will take the common that is m g. So, 1 minus rho f by rho s and this m term is taking common. So, m if we are interested to convert this m in terms of volume because you know we cannot measure the the weight we, we do not need to measure the mass, but d p is known to us. So, we can get the volume. So, accordingly mass can be con converted to this volume. So, pi d p q by 6 into rho s into g that will be the that will be the m if we consider it the particle as a spherical particle. So, when we will be considering the particle as a spherical particle, so this expression will be the like this. So, here f r value we will be putting like a k c d and a value is given here, k value is given here, we will put this expression here. So, by rearranging we will be getting the value of v t is equal to root over 4 g d p into rho p minus rho g divided by 3 c d into rho g. So, v t is the terminal velocity between the particle and liquid and the fluid in this case that is air. Now, we are able to understand now how the particle will be separated in the gravity settler and how the v t value can be calculated. Now, how the collection efficiency can be calculated because you know the more the particle size more will be the terminal settling velocity less will be the time requirement. So, the time required to travel from inlet to outlet within this time all particle size will not be equally settled. So, bigger the particle more easily settled lighter the particle it will be lesser settled. So, we can get one cumulative analysis on the if we say x axis if we plot the particle diameter and y axis if we write the collection efficiency we will see that when the particle diameter is less the collection efficiency will be less. But gradually it will increase cumulatively when we can get at the maximum collection efficiency when we will be considering the particle size in the higher range. So, that way it is physically it is happening. So, now mathematically if you want to express then we can write that the, that eta t is equal to 100 into weight of material collected by total amount entering in the collector and this eta t is equal to sum of i equal to 1 to m and m i n i by m. So, sum of i equal to 1 to n m i eta i by m. So, eta i is nothing but the fraction in range i collected by m i is the mass total mass of that fraction collected into 100. So, that way we can calculate the collection efficiency by using this formula. Now, we will see one numerical problem. So, uh, the following table shows the size distribution of a dust sample and the fraction efficiency of removal in a gas cleaning equipment calculate the overall collector efficiency. So, this table is giving so dust size less than 5 and then weight per 100 gram of dust equal to 2. 2, 2 gram and then fractional efficiency is given that is 1. Similarly, for 5 to 10 it is 2 and it is 7 and 10 to 15 it is 4 and 16. So, 15 to 20 is 7 and 44. So, 20 to 25 10 and 67 and 25 to 30 8 and 81 and 30 to 35 7 and 88 and 35 to 40 10 and 92 and 40 to 40, 50 15 and 93 and 50 to 60 that is 20 and 95 and 60 to 70 10 and 98 and greater than 75 and 100. So, we are getting this is the data given to us we need to calculate the collection efficiency. So, how we will do it we have the formula eta t is equal to sum of i equal to 1 to n sum of m i eta i by m. So, m i by m so this is nothing by w i. So, w i is the weight fractions in each size range. So, mass fraction and weight fraction both are same. So, in this case as per our statement you see if we apply this formula sum of i equal to 1 to n w i 
eta i. So, we have to find out the w i value, w i is nothing but m i by m. So, in the first case 2 gram that is m i and total is 100 gram. So, 2 by 100 that is our m i small m i. So, small m i it is equal to 2 by 100 for the first case and the for the second case also 2 by 100 for the fourth case 4 by 100. So, and the efficiency is 1, 7, 16 respectively. So, we will be using this formula 0 0.02 into 1 for the first case, second case 0 0.02 m i by m 0 0.02 into 7 that is equal to eta i. For the third case it is 0 0.04 into 16 eta i. So, similarly for other cases also we will be getting 0 0.07 into 44 plus 0 0.1 into 67 plus 0 0.08 into 81 as per the data given in the previous table. So, plus 0 0.07 into 88 plus 0 0.1 into 92 plus 0 0.15 into 93 plus 0 0.2 into 95 plus 0 0.1 into 98 plus 0 0.05 into 100. So, it is coming as 80.17 percent. So, now we are able to calculate the collection efficiency as 80.17 percent. Now, uh, in practice you know if we can reduce the height for the separation then more separation is possible. So, if we have a like, like this figure if this is our height in this height if we place some horizontal trays so, so in, in between inter tray distance will be reduced. So, air will pass through it. So, particle need to travel vertically from this point to this point when in the same time when it is moving from inlet to outlet, but we do not put any uh, internal air or any any plates inside. So, then the particle has to remove from this to this the complete edge height during the time when it will travel the length. Okay. So, by inserting these plates we are provide we are reducing the vertical length for travel by the particles. So, more separation is possible. So, inter uh, inserting several trays the collection efficiency of the device is improved since the gas flow velocity in the chamber remains substantially the same and yet each particle has a much shorter distance to fall before reaching the bottom of the passage between trays. So, in this case what will be the mathematical expression that we are going to discuss. Okay. So, for a settling chamber having dimension L W H. So, L is the length. So, W is the width say W L and this is our height. So, in that case and n number of trays including the bottom surface the hydraulic diameter for flow passage between the trays is then if I want to calculate the hydraulic diameter that is 4 into area divided by perimeter. So, 4 into area by perimeter. So, in this case this is our w and del h is this side. So, water is uh, air is flowing from this direction. So, this will be our, our surface area. So, w into del h. So, w into del h is your a. So, 4 into w into del h divided by your perimeter. So, perimeter this is our 2 into w plus del h. So, 4 will cut. So, that d h will be 2 w h by w plus del h and we will be getting the Reynolds number we know that rho d v by mu. So, rho d v by mu will be putting here. So, d will be this characteristic diameter that is d h and v is the velocity in the chamber. So, this is our r e. So, now if we want to get the value of v in terms of the known dimension that is that is w and del h then we can calculate v is equal to q divided by n into w into del h when q is the volumetric flow rate of the gas stream. So, gas is passing through this direction. So, q divided by cross sectional area which we are getting w into del h into n n is the number of that channel. So, that will into v that will be the q. So, v uh, is equal to q by n w into del h. So, if we put this value v here, so R e will be converting to 2 q rho g divided by n into mu g into w plus h. So, this expressions we are getting for R e. Now, when we do not have any interval, 
but if we have some we have some plates and intervals then del h is equal to h by n n number of channels. So, h by n. So, del h is equal to again we can get h by n minus h d if there is no no layer initially at the bottom of the any layer any any plate then h d will be 0 then del h is equal to h by n otherwise this h by n minus h d will be there initially at the bottom layer there may be some uh, solid in that case. So, r re we can calculate like this 2 q rho g by mu a into n w plus h and with this multiplication of this del h equal to h by n minus d h h d we can get r equal to 20 q rho g into rho a into n w plus h minus n h d. So, these are the expression we can get. Now, we are assuming that the flow is laminar, but in reality it may not be laminar and in it is very difficult to be laminar. So, which we are assuming that will not these expressions will not hold good and there need some modification. So, for laminar flow conditions within the trays particles of size d p of a particular material will settle a distance y with a terminal velocity v t in time t. During this time the particles are transported a distance l with the velocity of the gas stream. So, y by v t is equal to l by v similar expressions we have also had in the previous slide. So, y is replaced by capital H in that case. So, now the value of y can be found from a knowledge of the particle settling velocity. If the particles are uniformly distributed over the incoming stream, the efficiency of the collection that eta will be y by del h that is very interesting equations or assumptions. So, say number of particles are there and it is falling vertically. So, from the bottom initially maximum height is h and then it is falling. Okay. So, when the particles are at the bottom that will be certainly removed, but those particles at the top may not be able to come to the bottom. So, may not be removed. So, efficiency is depending upon the this term del h term and the y value the distance through which the particle uh, will travel during this time. So, that y by del h this value is your efficiency. So, now uh, efficiency is equal to y by this now from this expression we can get y equal to l v t by v. So, now if we put it here, so then we will be getting l v t by v del h. Now, again v t expressions we have, we have this expression v t is equal to this is our v and we have v t is equal to y into v by l. So, if we replace that v t value then eta will be n w l v t by q. Okay. So, when y is greater than del h then all particles of the size or larger will be collected in the settling chamber and the force balance already we have discussed that v t is equal to this formula that is equal to root over 4 g d p rho b minus rho g by 3 c c d rho g that is c d that is your suffix c d rho g and where c d is the drag coefficient which is related to the particle Reynolds number and particle Reynolds number rho d v by mu. So, d p rho g v t by mu g. Okay. Now, the general drag coefficient curve for spherical particle may be presented by three relationships. If we see the drag coefficient, so drag coefficient value will change with the Reynolds number. If it is a laminar flow, then Reynolds number is less. So, in that case c d is equal to 24 by r e p when r e p is less than 1 and when the turbulent region that is r e p greater than 1000 then again c d is equal to 0 0.45 or somewhere it is 0 0.44. For the transition region several empirical equations have been suggested and one this is here c d equal to 24 by r e which is r e p which was available here that has to be multiplied by some factor that is 1 plus 0 0.15 r e p to the power 0 0.687. So, uh, if we consider the Stokes law, so v t is equal to g d p square rho p minus rho g by 18 mu g and 
then what is the minimum particle diameter that can be separated from this expression we can get d p square equal to 18 mu v t divided by g rho p minus rho g. So, that is equal to d p square. So, d p root of this. So, d p will be root of 18 mu g v t divided by g into rho p minus rho g. Now, this v t expression if we replace then uh, v t we have got here. So, this v t. So, you see v t is equal to eta q divided by n w l. Okay. So, v t equal to eta q n w l. So, this we will put this here and we will be getting the expression of v t minimum 18 q mu g n w l g rho p minus rho g because in this case eta is equal to 1. So, that is why we are getting this expression. Now, although the efficiency relationship is based on laminar flow conditions within the unit, it is practically impossible to achieve laminar conditions. So, there will be some turbulence. So, there will be some variation as we have mentioned. Now, let us see we have the velocity of the gas stream as v and it is going through this chamber and we are considering a small volume and this is the distance d x. So, in this case if we get the, the mass balance the mass concentration of particles entering the elemental volume that is equal to a cross sectional area into d x and uh, this volume and mass concentration of the particle leaving the elemental volume a d x. Okay. So, these are related like this mass concentration of the particles entering the elemental volume a d x equal to mass concentration of particles leaving the elemental volume a d x plus the rate at which particles are deposited within the volume a d x. So, this is the mass balance of the particles. So, the first term we are getting a into v into c. So, a into v is the volume into c. So, this is the constant the total mass and similarly for this is outgoing that is c plus d c here we are getting c plus d c concentration we have to multiply it by the volume. So, volume is equal to what a into v. So, for the same case in this case the volume is nothing, but we are getting w into d x into v t because it is falling vertical in, in vertical direction. So, c into v t into w into d x where a is equal to w into del h. So, now from this expression if we integrate then the expression will be like this c in c out d c by c equal to v t w by a v into 0 to l d x or l n c out by c in equal to minus v t w l by a v. Now, if I want to get the efficiency, so efficiency is equal to nothing, but 1 minus c out by c in or c in minus c out divided by c in. So, l n c out by c in is equal to this expression we are getting. So, c out by c n will be your exponential of minus v t w l by a v. So, as, as mentioned here. So, ultimately in case of turbulence efficiency will be 1 minus exponential of minus this n l w v t by q, but this is nothing but the efficiency at laminar condition. So, laminar conditions if we can find out the efficiency of collection that can be converted into turbulent conditions by using this expression. So, these are the different mathematical expressions which can be used to calculate the efficiency for the separation of the particles. After this in this class, thank you very much for your patience.